Creating a pressure differential inside your housing does two things for you. It checks the integrity of your seals and it reinforces the closing mechanism. And to do so is actually quite simple. So what you'll need is a housing that has a vacuum port on it and you'll need a pump. So in order to create this vacuum, you're going to push the button on the valve itself and that's going to release the cap. You'll notice that this cap is tethered because you always want to have it plugged in when you don't have the pump installed. So there, inside this valve is a one-way spring valve. So the spring pushes out and seals, so it only lets air in and out when it's pushed in. So what you do is you take your pump and the insert. Check your seal and then you insert it into the valve. And you'll notice it clicks into place. Then you turn your attention over to the hand pump. And what you're gonna wanna do is pump the hand pump until you get to a number on the gauge. Now the number on the gauge is not critical. What is critical is that the gauge doesn't move. That would indicate that you have air transfer, indicating that there could be a leak. So I'll choose 10, which is what we suggest going to. You can go to 15 if you want to, but 10 is a good number to go to. And then what you do is hand pump to that. Okay, once you've reached your target number, what you wanna do is to take an initial look at the gauge and make sure that it is not dropping. If it's dropping immediately, that means that you've got a leak somewhere or you missed an O-ring or you nicked an O-ring. Basically, it means that there's gonna be a big problem if you get in the water. So what you're looking for is an initial drop, and if it doesn't drop then, then what you wanna do is let it sit over time. Now, what I suggest doing is if you can manage the time is to check all of your system, take your pictures, check your card, make sure you don't have your lens cap on, check your strobes the night before. I always create this vacuum before I leave and I have this setting on the door on the way out. Um, so what I'll do is I'll create the vacuum, I'll release the plug from the vacuum and the reason that you want to do that is because you're checking the system for a leak. Now I don't have the cap plugged in because of that one-way valve and I'm not under pressure right now. But now that I took it out, I do suggest putting it back in because that's just a good habit to get into. Place that there, and while it's sitting overnight, this should hold that vacuum overnight. The reason you don't want to leave this installed is because this isn't designed to go underwater. So if there's a leak or a hairline crack in this pump itself, you'll notice that the gauge drops. And if you have this attached, there's nothing that says where that leak occurred, and it very well could be over here. So when you're ready to go or before you go in the water, Go back to your housing, push your button to release your cap. And then now when you install the insert from the pump, you'll notice that your number should jump right back to where it was before, indicating that the system held during that time period. Release, and then make sure that you replug. Now, if you do not replug this valve, as you go underwater, water pressure will push the spring-loaded valve inside and result to a leak inside the housing. That's why you always want to put this back in there. Also, what you can do is take a little bit of the provided Eyclite lube and then lubricate the two O-rings on the cap itself, and that'll ensure smooth operation that this gets inserted and removed easily. Now, another thing that you'll notice is if you take this pump insert in and out multiple times, a very small pocket of air gets transferred each time. So what we've noticed is, and customers will ask, well, I take this in and out a few times and I notice that half a tick or a tick on my gauge has gone down. Well, that's due to that pocket of air transfer. What you're looking for is that your gauge went from 10 to five or a large swing like that. If that's the case, then you have a leak. The other thing that people ask us all the time is, well, do I want to dive with the housing under a vacuum? And the answer to that is absolutely yes, because when you have a pressure differential created, you're reinforcing all of the closing mechanisms. Your three latches on the back are reinforced, your port is reinforced because they're being pushed together. So if you ever find yourself in rough surf, you know that all of those components are being pushed together. For example, with this housing under a vacuum, you could not take this back off without releasing that vacuum. So on that note, to release the vacuum, you have two options. One is you can reopen the cap and put your insert back in. And then to release the vacuum, there's a lever on the bottom of the handle. And then that simply push it and you're going to 
release the vacuum. The other way is to, if you don't have this handy, let's say for example you left your lens cap on, you're on the boat, oh no. The housing's waterproof without the vacuum, so I need to take this off and I need to take the lens cap off and put the port back on, which can be done, but you don't have your hand pump. But you can just take a pen or a small tool, and if you look on the inside, you'll be able to push the spring-loaded valve, and it'll also release that vacuum. Again, replug your va valve, and now you can open your system. So the entire vacuum system provides a lot of sense of security and is very simple to use. Now the harder thing to diagnose is what happens if you notice that the needle drops from 10 to 5 over a long period of time. Well that's a little harder to diagnose exactly where that fault is occurring. Now one thing you can do is if that happens and you've double checked all your seals and you've reassembled and it just keeps happening over and over is take your camera out of the housing reassemble everything and you can take it into the water with it under that vacuum. Now if you dive with it and you do your best to keep it in the same orientation the whole time, meaning that this is upward, you gotta keep in mind that any water that enters the housing is always gonna follow gravity and follow downwards. So if you can do a quick dive and do your best to keep the housing upright, then you should be able to, after a short period of time, go back, check, and see, follow wherever the small drip water line is. Because remember, your gauge dropped over time, meaning it was a very small leak over a long period of time. So you'll be able to notice maybe that drop of water and the source of where it came from, which will help you diagnose the problem.